Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I am finally doing the long-awaited Percy Jackson edition of By the Book, my series where I look at how movie adaptations change book characters and then draw them as they were originally described. Now, when you guys first suggested this one to me, I wasn't sure when I was going to do it. I was kind of putting it off because I had never read the book or watched the movie, so I knew there was a lot of research I was going to have to do. But I decided to put it on the front burner for a while after I saw the emails that Rick Riordan, the author of the books, originally sent to the producers when he saw the script for the movie the first time. It's some of the harshest criticism I have ever seen, and I can't imagine sending it in a business email. So the question is, did the movie really deserve this? In my best attempt to be fair, I'm going to start with the character that they changed the least, and that is our protagonist, Percy Jackson. Description-wise, he's pretty okay except for one glaring error, and this becomes a huge problem throughout the entire movie, and that is that one of the first ways that Percy is described is as 12 years old. That's right, we're talking prepubescent and actual child. So why then is there a 17 to 20 year old actor playing him in this movie? Well, it turns out one of the big decisions they made while adapting this film was that they wanted the characters to be significantly older, like high school senior level. And this changes almost everything about the story, as well as the characters themselves. Because the book is told from his perspective, he's also the character I had the hardest time finding concrete details in the book about how he looks. One of the best examples is when his mother is talking about his father, and she says, He was kind, Percy, she said, tall, handsome, and powerful, but gentle too. You have his black hair, you know, and his green eyes. This is one of the rare chances when we actually get a description of him because he doesn't go around describing himself very frequently. I even had to get a few details from the Percy Jackson wiki as best as I could because a lot of the details about him come into later books and in interviews and things like that. He doesn't get described a lot. As for the look of his face, I didn't have a lot to work with. They never really described it. Apparently in later books he's described as handsome, but that doesn't really tell you much. Um, I did find a quote from a later book on the wiki that described him as having Roman god-like handsomeness, which gave me a little bit more of an idea, so I tried to give him some more Roman sculpture type look to his face as well as I could while still making him look like a 12 year old, which is a bit hard because the Romans really appreciated a strong adult looking face and nose, um, but I tried to blend the two together as best as I could. I also gave him dark eyebrows because he has black hair, and typically people with black hair also have very dark eyelashes and eyebrows. And I generally just tried to make him match with his personality throughout the books. He's described frequently, at least in the wiki, as having a mischievous smirk and that sort of mischievous personality, but at least in the first book, he mainly is reacting to things and he goes through quite a bit. So while he does come off as very smart and competent, I didn't see him as a huge jokester character character, mainly because he was pretty much suffering through almost the whole book and having to deal with a lot of nonsense. So one of the few times that you get really clear descriptions of his clothes, Rick Riordan is terrible at describing clothes, he frequently forgets to say what they're wearing, um, or maybe he just leaves it out because he doesn't think it's important, but it made my job here very difficult. Um, but one of the times when we did get to hear what he was wearing is when he was wearing his orange camp half-blood t-shirt, so I decided to put him in that. He also is frequently described as wearing jeans, and we also got a very good description of Riptide. Riptide is Percy's sword. He's given it by Chiron, and it is described as a shimmering bronze sword with a double-edged blade, a leather-wrapped grip, and a flat hilt riveted with gold studs. I wish that the author had described Percy in this much detail, but again, like I said, because it's from his perspective, I can kind of forgive it. In the first book, nothing is said about Percy's complexion, though evidently in an interview he was described as having a Mediterranean complexion, which I don't really know what that means. I just typed in Mediterranean complexion, Mediterranean model, and tried to get a sort of idea of what that looks like. I think what they mean is olive skin, not dark olive skin, but sort of a medium olive skin kind of look. Um, and that's all I had to go with, so that's how I colored his skin. Now, sea green, I always think of as sort of like sea glass, if you've ever seen it. It's like primarily green, but with little hints of blue in there, and usually a very bright and vivid sort of 
of color. Now, this is one of the things that is very hard to do in a movie, and even if they gave the actor sea green contacts, I'm not sure if it would have looked good, so I can't criticize too much about this, but since we're trying to match the books perfectly, I'm going to give him true sea green eyes. This is something that I think some people misunderstood when I did my first uh, by the book on Harry Potter. A lot of people thought that I was like criticizing the movie makers and criticizing the actors and actresses for not looking exactly like the books. I'm not trying to do that. I understand that like realistically movies can't have their char their actors and actresses look identical to the books. I'm mostly doing this series because with drawing you can get it really close and that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. Um, but all that aside, here is the Percy that I vis envisioned based on the description that I had in the book. He's obviously considerably younger than the actor that they used. That was a creative choice, um, one that the author was really not happy about, and I think a lot of the people who read the books were not happy about either. But other than that, we were mostly there. Um, he had black hair, it was longer black hair. He had blue eyes, which is close to the sea green that we're looking for. And other than that, Percy isn't described in a lot of detail, so they mostly get off the hook for this one. His personality was also mostly the same. Next up is Annabeth, and here is where things start to go really downhill. So this is Annabeth in the film of The Lightning Thief, and here is how she is described. She was probably my age, maybe a couple of inches taller, and a whole lot more athletic looking. With her deep tan and her curly blonde hair, she was almost exactly what I thought a stereotypical California girl would look like, except her eyes ruined the image. They were startlingly gray, like storm clouds, pretty but intimidating too, as if she was analyzing the best way to take me down in a fight. Now, whether or not this actress has an athletic build in the movie, I can't really speak to because that's kind of a general term. She doesn't look super muscly, but I can't really say for sure whether they did or didn't succeed in that way. But on almost every other level, it does not fit the description at all. And it's strange because hair dyeing for a movie role is not uncommon at all. And getting a girl who's blonde and tan in Hollywood seems like it wouldn't be very difficult in the least. I had about twice as many notes about Annabeth as I did about either of the male main characters. She just gets described a lot, and so it makes it even more stark the difference between the actress that they picked and the way that they styled her versus the character that she's supposed to be. Now, she's supposed to look about 12, she's supposed to be taller than Percy, which she isn't in the movie, and she's supposed to have blonde hair, more specifically honey blonde, which is clarified on page 103. She also always has a Yankees cap, which is referenced on 147, and this Yankees Yankee's cap allows her to go invisible. Now this is a really important part of the book and she uses this ability all the time. I'm not sure if they thought it was too similar to the invisibility cloak in Harry Potter, um, which I don't know if they would avoid that for that reason, but they left it out of the movie completely and made Annabeth a pretty useless character as a result um, because they didn't let her win many of the fights that she won in the book and they took away her most important item. So yeah, I'm not really sure why they made these choices, but they pretty much ruined her. We didn't get enough information about her face in the book other than that she's pretty and she has intimidating eyes. Working with that, I decided to make her look a bit like a Roman or a Greek statue, so I gave her a straight nose and dark downturned eyebrows with upturned eyes so that she would have that sort of intelligent, intimidating looking face. Because she is young, I'm trying to keep the face relatively soft looking, I'm not trying to do any extreme cheekbones, and I'm mostly just trying to make her look like a tough young girl. Now they said her hair was curly, but more specifically that it is curled like a princess. Now to me those mean big drill style curls. Uh, princess curls are a little different from natural curls, at least in my mind, um, so I tried to structure them more around that than a standard curly hair. Now, Annabeth had several outfits throughout the book, but the one that was described in the most detail is this one from page 231. A few minutes later, she came out in Waterland flower print shorts, a big red Waterland t-shirt, and commemorative Waterland surf shoes. She also has an important necklace on a leather strap that gets brought up several times throughout the book. It has little clay beads of different colors that commemorate every summer that she spent at Camp Half-Blood. And it also has her father's college ring, which she keeps despite the fact that they have a strained relationship. Now, they just cut this out of the movie altogether. I guess they thought she didn't need a backstory. 
Despite the fact that she looks absolutely nothing like her book description, I actually think that's the least of the concern when it comes to how Annabeth was treated in this movie. One of the most upsetting things for me was that this character, who is pretty useful and intelligent throughout the book, and I mean, after all, she should be, she's the daughter of the goddess of wisdom and battle strategy, um, so you would expect her to be really useful, strategic, that kind of thing throughout the story. But um, what happens instead is right after we're introduced to her and she declares to Percy that... She is immediately bested in combat by him, even though she's been coming to this camp every single summer since she was seven years old, and all she does is train and train and train. And even though she's the daughter of the goddess of battle strategy, She really is no match for Percy, at least in the movie version. And it really takes the steam out of the whole team, especially when she later says that Percy needs her when he's going on his mission. I mean, it doesn't really seem like it because he was able to take you down with almost no training and he didn't know anything about his powers really at all at this point. Um, but sure, Annabeth, I guess you can come on the road trip. I don't mean to sound so salty, but Book Annabeth is actually like a pretty decent character, so it kind of hurts me to see her done like this. In order to make her look athletic, even though she's relatively young, I tried to broaden her shoulders a little bit, and I gave her more definition in her legs and her arms. You can't go too nuts with this kind of stuff when you're dealing with a young character because you'll make them look crazy. Even the fittest kids are not going to have bulging muscles until well after they hit puberty, so definitely don't go too ham with a character who's supposed to be 12 or 13. I made sure to give her beads all special attention because there were a few points in the book where they specifically said what was on the beads and what color they were. Uh, the white bead with the pine tree was the most important one so far, um, so I made sure to incorporate that. Though they ended up being so small it was kind of hard to put on all the stuff that it said in the books was on the beads. I tried to keep her whole color palette pretty warm because I believe Percy's is actually pretty cool. It was in the movie and I thought that was actually a good idea. They usually dressed him in cool grays and blues and things like that. And since he's usually described with jeans, that seems to check out. Though of course the Camp Half-Blood t-shirts were always bright orange. Considering that she's blonde with a deep tan, it makes sense to keep her whole color palette pretty warm and sunny. And I tried to get that honey blonde kind of look by making the top of her hair the lightest where it's getting the most sun and then sort of gradually going down to a more orangey, caramely colored um, blonde on the bottom. That makes it look a little bit more soft and nicer, I think, rather than just having one flat color. It also makes it look a little more natural, I believe. I really haven't done too many of these by the book episodes, but I'm already sensing a theme where it seems like in movie adaptations, the thing they always skimp out on is the eyes. And I think that's a huge mistake because usually that's something that becomes a huge part in books. The character's eyes are usually slightly unusual and are really important. I've worn gray contacts before and they layer over naturally blue eyes very well and look quite convincing even close up. So I'm really not sure why they didn't go to the bother. And honestly, I don't believe that Daniel Radcliffe was allergic to the green contacts they tried to give him. He probably was just too young to put them in because he's wearing contacts now, I'm pretty sure. I think he actually does need glasses in real life, so how is he seeing? Explain that, media. Oh, right, and here's Annabeth finished. She looks so different, I don't even think we need to make another comparison. Last up is poor Grover. Grover is the best friend to Percy Jackson throughout this series. He's a satyr, which means that his lower legs, I guess that's the only kind of legs he has. His the two his legs are um, goat legs, so that's that's a fact about Grover. Another fact about him is that he's completely different from his book version in the movie, like 100% his personality, literally nothing even is remotely similar. Um, and honestly, like, I don't even know why they named him the same thing because he's so different. Other than the fact that they both have goat legs, it literally could not be more different. So the most obvious first difference, I guess, is that they changed his race. Um, apparently he's Caucasian. I literally couldn't find anything in the book that confirmed this, not even like, uh, Grover went pale or anything like that like there's no, I don't even I can't even allude to the fact that he's Caucasian but according to the wiki which I have to go by because it's 
all I have because they didn't describe him in, properly in the book um, is that he is Caucasian. So they changed his race and that honestly doesn't even bother me because honestly there are so many white characters in fantasy stories that I think it's kind of time to change it up a little bit. But what they did to his personality I cannot forgive. Like they've left nothing of Grover. Grover is in the book again, you know, 12. Um, Percy thinks that maybe he's been held back a few years initially um, because he has acne and the start of a wispy goatee. Um, now the start of a wispy goatee is not how I would describe this incredibly dense goatee that they gave him in the movie. Maybe they just thought, you know, since we're aging them up, it's fine. But I haven't even seen a high schooler with this strong of a goatee in my life. Um, so I don't know why they thought they could get away with that. Um, he doesn't have acne. His skin's perfect in the movie. Instead of being a really shy kid who cries a lot and is generally just being crushed by his responsibilities, they decided that Grover would be a total ladies man who just loves chasing around the, the, the girls. Um, I don't know why they made this his primary character trait. I mean, he's straight up girl obsessed in this movie. One of the first scenes that we see him in in the movie shows him taking photographs of the like Aphrodite statues on a school field trip with his phone and he gets called out by the teacher for it and it's just like it's just weird especially because these characters are supposed to be so young at the start of this thing and Grover doesn't seem like this type of character at all but anyway working with what I have from the book description the things we know about Grover are that he's supposedly scrawny which again the actor seems to have an average to muscular build which uh you know is what Annabeth's supposed to have, but whatever. I guess we're just ignoring that. Um, and he's supposed to have a curly brown hair, brown eyes. He has little horns that are hidden by his hair um, during the first book, so I won't really show those as much. And apparently he also has goat eyes. Um, there's one part in the book where they talk about his goat eyes, which I feel like should have been mentioned a lot earlier. Um, but basically uh, a goat's eyes go sideways and they have this really interesting pupil. So that's a really cool character detail that they should have kept. Um, and of course he's often in his Camp Half-Blood orange t-shirt. Um, I tried to make it look a little big on him so that he'd look scrawnier. And um, he also wears jeans. I left his jeans baggy so that they would have room for his goat legs. Um, and I didn't end up drawing his goat legs because they actually did a good job of that in the movie. And that sounded hard. Also, I cut off the legs on the other two characters and now it wouldn't look right if I did a full body picture of him. Ah, say lovey. Grover in the book is a vegetarian, he loves animals, he can talk to animals, and he's basically just a really motivated and dedicated character who is very sensitive. In the movie, he's supposed to be the comedy character, I guess, which leads to some of the worst, most cringy scenes in the entire film that I honestly wish were just not in there. I mean, this fedora dance scene is completely unforgivable. This whole section has the song Poker Face in the background the whole time, which really dates the movie as well. So that about does it for poor baby Grover. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I'm going to be doing a live stream this Sunday to celebrate us hitting 600,000 subscribers. So if you want to come to that, it will be uh, starting at the time shown on the screen. And if you have notifications on for this channel already, it will also notify you so you don't have to worry about missing it. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Special thank you to all of my patrons, including Bambo, Kalpa Pong, Dr. Casket, Elizabeth Album, Evan Lanier, Hope Chilsom, Imagine Creation, JJ Jade, Carla Tapia, Blep, Le Blep, Le Blep, Micah Dactyl, Okamore, Ollie, Rachel Singh, Rosie Warlock, Sergeant Pendulum, The Artsy Moose, Yaboy ST, and Zoe Stardust.